how does the JKBMS operate a heating pad? Hi folks, I'm Roger from Offgrid and in this uh, very brief episode I'm going to take you through how you set up a JKBMS uh, with a heating pad to heat your battery. First thing, uh, you've got to uh, buy a BMS that has the heating capability. So generally speaking, so for example this model number, JK, etc, etc, the hyphen H means that it has the heating capability. Uh, it's important that you buy one that has the uh, heating capability and when you buy the BMS it is important that you buy this little cable to go with it. So it is this cable that does the heating. I'll be uh, showing you it in action later on but just as a very brief description with this cable uh, the red and the black are to work with a smart charger uh, and the green is um, when, when the BMS cutoff temperature is reached for, for charging uh, then it will uh, basically connect this uh, to your neutral so to speak. So you take this to the neutral of your heating pad and uh, for the positive you go to the main positive terminal of your battery. Now Invariably, when you get your JK BMS, uh, you've got some Chinese writing there, uh, no English, so you'll just need to know that um, it is basically this one. It, it only fits in one place. Okay, this is for the switch, it doesn't fit in there, and it doesn't fit in anywhere else. It only fits in on this uh, plug here, and that is where it needs to go. So to <coughs> connect a uh, 48 volt system into uh, a heating pad is a bit of a challenge because most heating pads are 12 volts. In fact, we've really struggled to find a heating pad that is 48 volts. I'm sure they're out there, but uh, they're very difficult to find. If anybody has found a good one, please uh, let me know in the comments. But uh, what we decided we would uh, use a 48 volt relay. So this is a 48, uh, the, the coil, the activation coil is 48 volt. Um, but then, as you well know, on the, uh, the yellow and the white, those are the activation, that is the activation circuit. So one would go to your ground or neutral and the other would go to your positive. In, in my case, I've chosen yellow to go to ground and white to go to positive just because that's that was the side that the thing was on it doesn't actually matter either way it's probably a right way of doing it but either way has always worked for me so coming from the bms we've got uh, this is the cable that runs the heating system the one of all these little green wires that all terminate in a little lug uh, i've attached that to my yellow cable and heat shrunk it so it's Nicely tied away there. The uh, positive side is coming out uh, just through a barrel going to a fuse, always to a fuse and then onto my main positive terminal. So at the moment uh, that's off. You can see I've got my multimeter uh, checking for continuity and it's on one at the moment so nothing there. So I've got that on uh, the black and the red wires, those are the ones that we'll want to use. So I'm recording this so you can see on the app and what I'm going to do, so don't do this. Uh, the only way I could do this was to put uh, the cap of ice on top of the BMS, so a bit risky in case it falls over. So we definitely not going to let it fall over. Uh, so the temperature probe is in there and as you can see it's dropping rapidly down from the 22.9 and you will see in a moment there will be a click as you can see the relay is turned on so it's closed the circuit and our multimeter is busy screeching at us so that will activate the heating pad let me turn it off it should heat up in seconds now. There we go, turn back off again. As you can see, it's rising rapidly again. Uh, the T2 was the one that I put on. Now, <clears throat> uh, we've got a 48 volt relay, but that doesn't mean that we 
run 48 volts through it. It's just the the act the activating coil, uh, the the yellow and the white cables or pins um, 85 and 86 on here are the activation pins if you like and they have to be 48 volts but uh, you can connect anything to your black and red wires that and in our case we are going to connect that to 12 volt we're going to use a Victron uh, 48 to 12 uh, converter so not a charger a, a converter and that will drive the coil so we will uh, run that through through the relay and to the heating pad so that's how that all works out uh, now that I've tested and made sure I know it's working we will um, mount these uh, two temperature probes from the JKB MS onto the battery one of the I thought I'd just make a point about the JKB MS and the way that the JKB MS handles the heating pad some of the other BMSs uh, are quite easy to program it uh, so that it activates the heating pad only when it is being charged and but it, then the battery is too cold. Uh, the JK BMS, the way that I've done this now, I've ignored the smart charger uh, functionality and I've, I've basically set it to uh, activate when it gets cold regardless of whether it's being charged or not, whether the battery is being charged or not. Uh, and that is because I don't want the battery to uh, get really cold overnight. Uh, I'd rather use a little bit of power from the battery to keep warm. And then in the morning when everything uh, starts waking up and the sun comes out and the solar panels start working, uh, then it, it, the battery should be ready to accept charge. So the little bit, little bit of, of charge that it's going to use from the battery I think is worthwhile. Uh, not especially in our winters here not to waste several hours while the battery starts heating up because it got so cold overnight so I think that is a good compromise uh, there are other ways of activating the heating pad uh, which we've done in the past using uh, you know uh, temperature probes that, that are not linked to the BMS and that has been very successful because you can generally set it to uh, activate the heating pad before it reaches the BMS temperature cutoff. So probably two or three degrees, turn the pad on, and then at one degree, the JK BMS will turn the charge off if it gets that cold. It's quite a good system. It just means there are more components to configure a program and look out for, and that can fail. The heating function on uh, this BMS can carry three amps. It's quite a strange arrangement with all these little green wires but as I said uh, basically when it clicks the heating on it uh, bridges this to neutral or connects this to neutral so you would need to run a live from your battery pack uh, and then use this as the neutral and either you could power a 3 amp total of 3 amps of heating pads with with this as it is just directly or if you have uh, heating pads that exceed 3 amps, uh, you will need to uh, use this to turn a relay on and off. And that's uh, in the example that I showed you earlier with that 48 volt battery, uh, that's what we've done. Um, we would actually have been fine with 3 amps, but as I said, finding a 48 volt heating pad is, is like finding hen's teeth. And uh, again, I'd appreciate in the comments if you've found the source of them of decent quality. So we chose in that instance to uh, hook this up to a, a 48 volt relay uh, and again remember that the 48 volt is the, is the uh, switching for, for the coil, the activation coil to, to actually switch the relay on and off. It's not the voltage that you can bridge because basically uh, it just then acts as a switch uh, and you can pass whatever current you want through uh, pins, uh, I think it's 87 and 30. So usually we take 30 to whatever is receiving the power and the source we put to 87. If you've got a 5 pin relay, 87A is the uh, default when it's off, is bridged with 30. And when the relay turns on, eight, pin 87 uh, bridges to pin 30. It just acts as a switch. So that's what we've done. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Uh, um, I found very little information on YouTube and the internet on exactly how you work these 
Uh, but yeah, so hopefully that helps you. We'll probably do a, a more detailed one later on uh, and show how it works with the, the smart charger and all that sort of stuff. So see you in the next episode. Cheers.